Welcome to Harry Potter and you. Thanks to everyone who voted. Um, we have chosen Carriage G. Now, I'm taking my glasses off because I keep reflecting in the light. Unfortunately, it's a little bit blurry. A little bit more at the end of the video on how I put it all together. I can't give it all away just yet because it's, you're still on the train. and There's some still some things to talk about. So before we get started, don't forget to uh, subscribe and hit the bell to keep up to date with what's going on. And also on X slash Twitter and threads if you're not into the weirdness which is X nowadays slash Twitter. Anyway, here's the story. So we're still on chapter six um, from the books, which coincidentally is chapter six from our story, Alcohol's Express. So you slowly begin to walk down the platform and into the crowds of parents and students who have yet to board the train. Your parents follow behind you with your trunk and Odin in this cage. As you pass the engine, you smell the coal burning and you feel the warmth of the steam on your face. The first carriage has the words prefix only by each of the doors. You continue to walk down and look into the windows as you go. They look very busy. Perhaps it's just easier to go near the back. As you get to the second from last carriage, things look much better. Your parents tell you to get a move on as they'll be setting off any minute. The realisation that you're not going to see your family for over three months hits you. You start to get tears in your eyes as your parents give you a warm group hug. Your mum says, remember that you can write to us at any time. Professor McGonagall said Odin will collect and deliver the letters. Your dad points out the other children and says, look at the older kids. They are happy to go to school. So it must be fun. Being in Scotland, away from the city, it must be a lovely, safe place to study. We are always here for you. You grab the handle of your trunk and make your way to carriage G. Two ginger-haired twins are helping the spectacled boy you saw at Diagon, Diagon Alley lift his trunk onto the train. As the spectacled boy pushes his trunk down the carriage, they turn to you and say in unison, We are Fred and George. Would you like a hand with your trunk? You happily agree, not knowing which one is Fred and which one is George. They pull your trunk up behind them as they get on, and you follow on behind. They pile into compartment three with the spectacled boy. Yes, well done. You got the same one as Harry Potter. Someone's been doing some reading. You look at compartment four and spot Lavender Brown with two other students. She smiles at you. She smiles at you. She smiles at you and beckons you in. You find a place for your trunk and put Odin's cage on top. Lavender takes one look at him, gasps, and says, "Wow, what a lovely owl! What's his name?" His name is Odin. He's a brown owl. You reply. Lavender turns to the other three in the compartment. She introduces you by name, then points to the others. This is Lisa Turpin, Wayne Hopkins, and Anthony Goldstein. You timidly wave to them and look out the window as you hear a loud whistle. The twins jump back on board, followed by another younger-looking ginger boy. He might be in your year. The train starts to move and you wave goodbye to your parents. Your attention is then drawn to a ginger-haired girl running after the train. She was half laughing, half crying. You look back to where your parents were, but they are now lost in the distant crowd. After a while, you start to loosen up and talk to your new friends. There is something about all being in it together in this adventure into the unknown. You learn that Lavender is pure blood, which means everyone has magic in her family. So what are you called? Lavender, if you are pure blood, then what am I? None of my parents have magic. Just then, a young ginger-haired boy walks past the compartment door. He looks through the window, then carries on up the train. Lavender turns to you, looking a bit red in the face. Sorry, I was distracted. So you would be a Muggleborn, or, well, a rather unkind name is, well, Mudblood, sorry. Mudblood sounds familiar. You remember that Draco boy and his father back in Diagon Alley. He sounds a right piece of the compartment door slides back. Anything off the trolley, dears? A smiling, dimpled woman is at the door with a trolley full of snacks and the words Honey Dukes Express on the side. You take a look and you see Bertie Bott's every flavour beans, cauldron cakes, chocolate frogs, Jubal's best blowing gum, jelly slugs, licorice rons and rons, licorice wands and pumpkin pasties. Between everyone you get at least one of everything. Lavender and Anthony are having great fun educating you what things are and what they taste like. Most things are great, apart from that grass flavoured Bertie Bott's every flavour bean. The chocolate frogs have famous witches and wizards in them. Open yours and see what you get. 
Oh, and don't forget to catch the frog, says Lavender. You open the chocolate frog box and the frog tries to jump away. You catch it with lightning reflexes. Wow, you would make a good keeper, says Anthony. You think of football and think, well, at least there'll be something normal at this school. You look at the card. I got Hengist of Woodcroft. Hengist of Woodcroft, everyone shouts in Scottish accent. You look startled. Sorry, is it something you do when he pops up? No one is sure where it started, says Lavender. After a while, you notice the scenery outside of the window has become wilder. Gone are the towns and neat fields. Now there are rolling hills and winding rivers. Just then, a round-faced boy knocks at the door and slides it open. He looks upset. Sorry, he says. Have you seen a toad at all? You turn to him and say, sorry, we haven't seen one. Well, if you see him, then he left and you go back to a conversation. Though you're starting to run out of things to say. A few minutes later, the compartment door slides open again. The round-faced boy was back, but this time he had a girl with him. She had very bushy brown hair. Has anyone seen a toad? Neville's lost one, she says. She sounded rather bossy. You turn back to her to say you haven't, but a thought crosses your mind. Should you go with them to help find the toad? Right, so that's where we are. So, you have two questions. In this one, one's kind of important, one is kind of character building. So the first one is, should you go with Neville and the bushy-haired girl to find the toad? So, options, yes, go find the toad, and no, stay with the new friends. And then the second one, which is kind of adding flavour to your character, which is your favourite from the trolley. So the Bertie brought every flavour, beans, cauldron cakes, chocolate frogs, Shrebles Best, blowing gum, jelly slugs, licorice one, pumpkin pasties. So they are your voting options. Uh, so now we're going to go back into the, like, the previous chapter. And the work I had to do is work out this bloody train. So there were 40 students in Harry's year. I had to look up the carriages and their makeup. Each carriage has eight compartments. This is like the ones in the book because uh, if you, it's one window per compartment, one large window per compartment, and they have eight main windows each. Um, one carriage is for prefects. That gives us seven, seven carriages to hold everyone, assuming they're all 40 per year, um, six per compartment with a free seat for you to pick because I had to leave a space for you. Uh, I did take shortcuts to spread the students, so like one compartment in each um, carriage for first years. It just made it easier <laughs> to spread everyone around. Uh, so basically I got all 40 first years and spread them between each carriage, one compartment each. So no matter what compart no matter what carriage you picked, you would find a compartment with uh one set of students. Luckily, carriage G also has Harry in one's compartment. That is an extra one I added, um, just because it's a bit cannon breaking if you end it into the same uh, compartment. Because I don't want to go too far off the track of the actual story. Um, kind of like a side character. Uh, so you, that was the only carriage that had more than one compartment with the first years in it. So well done. So for placing Harry and Ron, uh, we knew Harry picked a carriage near the end of the train because it says Harry pressed on through the crowds until he found an empty compartment near the end of the train. It wasn't at the end of the train, it was near the end of the train. So well done, those who've been reading up. Uh, Percy with the prefix up front. Uh, interesting, it says we have, they have a compartment. Prefix have got two compartments to themselves. Um, like later on, we end up with like the prefix carriage. So not quite how that works out. Um, so I just went with the, the like, ca uh, carriage themselves. Just for maths. Uh, the twins and Ron get on the same carriage. So after a while, Ron joins Harry um, in the book. So that's why you see him briefly, because it says he was looking for a space. Um, so that's why he looks through your window, because he goes down the train and back up again to find the space with Harry in it. Uh, Harry's compartment is empty because the twins were all in there to start with. So you kind of avoid it because oh, it's a full compartment. But actually, they move off somewhere else. But I'm not going to say now until next episode. <laughs> Around half past twelve, there was a great clattering outside in the corridor, and a smiling, dimpled woman slipped back their door and said, "Anything from the trolley dears, or anything off the trolley dears?" So we knew twelve thirty midday was the trolley. Um, sometime later, Neville comes in looking for Trevor. Now he must have been further up the train to come down the train. And this is kind of 
further down the train journey, because it refers to the countryside now flying outside. It says within a few minutes he comes back with Hermione. So she must have been further down the train for him to pick her up. So he goes down the train, looking for the Trevor, looking for the Trevor, looking for Trevor. So he's running in a hurry, keeps going, and he comes back again. So that trip back uh, is quite short. It's within one conversation, uh, talking about the fat rat yellow. Um, so they come back quite quickly. So it's near the end of the train, so he goes to the end. Uh, Hermione, like, oh, you haven't found him. Must be near the end of the train. So she goes back out with him to help him out, go back the other way to find Trevor. And that's where your decision comes in for the next one. I could share more when we get off the train, when we get uh, actually to Hogwarts. Uh, I have a map uh, of every carriage and which of the first years are in, in which carriage. Uh, and I'll share that once we've got off the blinking train because we've got a bit more story on the train to go. So that's it for this one. Don't forget to vote on uh, zillandplays.com. Uh, there's also a link in the description below. Uh, you have a fair amount of time. I'll put it on text on the screen because I can't remember what the date was now. Uh, to vote for this one because I am going away for a little bit. So there'll be a slight delay in the next story while I go away with the kids on holiday. If you don't have to do too much reading for this one. You can kind of just pick what you feel. Um... Yeah, not much happens on this point. You can reread the chapter if you want, because I have read it a lot. So I hope you have a good time, and I'll see you in the next video.